Hey, Saints. We will call. We will, uh, greet you with uh, hello, Saints, because this is a Sunday. Y'all here? <laughs> anyway, I gotta wait for somebody. Okay. Hey, Princess A. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Game on metal on. Hello. <laughs> Y'all gotta check out this series on Netflix. I'm sure I assume everybody has Netflix, but it's called Self Made, right? A story of Madam C.J. Walker. I think she was the first uh, American. Uh, hey, Chocolate Bay. Uh, C.J. Walker. I think she was the first black uh, millionaire. But I didn't realize that this is a story about my, my is a history lesson about my town. <clears throat> I was raised in Indianapolis, Indiana, right? And I never knew the story of how my family ended up in Indianapolis. My grandmother, she had she was from a big family, but she was the only person in her generation in that city. So now I learned some things about Indianapolis. Apparently, it was a boom town for black people, and a lot of black people migrated there during this time. It looks like the 30s or 40s. That would have been right around the time that she moved there. My mother was born there, but raised in Indianapolis. Anyway, so it's very interesting to see how people migrated, were migrating there. Black folks at, at communities are growing real, real fast. And uh, that's how we got there, I guess. I always wonder how she had this big old huge family, but she was the only one there because she's the only one that migrated. She gathered up her family and moved to Indianapolis. So I don't know what the booming industry was there. But we've been there ever since. And now it's well over 100 people. Hey, people. Y'all have got to see this series. Ain't nothing really caught my, no series caught my interest in a while now. I've been waiting for Oprah to come back with hers, Queen Sugar and uh, Greenleaf. Uh, it's, people t- keep telling me that it's not, they're not out of season. But it seems to me it's been a lot longer than the usual. From the comeback, I saw Empire came back, and they're a couple of episodes in. So, but this thing really caught my attention. Just the just the business aspect, of running the business, right? Okay, let me see. Oh, a lot of y'all here. Okay, Queen of Denial. That's a nice name, Queen of Denial. <laughs> it's very good. Yes. So I watched the first episode. I got so excited. I said, well, I don't want to lose the sun. So let me go ahead and talk about this first one. But apparently it's four episodes are done, but it's a series. Now, don't ask me if the mini series or a whole series. I don't know. So far as fascinating. Who is, did I just see Miss Tracy in here? I think I just saw her in here. Leah, Tracy with the T. Hey, Tracy with the T. <laughs> Kim, you're a great cook. Aunt, Aunt B. Hollins. <laughs> Where are your names so long? <laughs> yeah, people. So, uh, yes, go watch that. That Netflix is doing some pretty great things. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Hi, Tim and all. Hi. How'd y'all do it? Not going to church. The ones of you who do go to church. I uh, I go every Sunday. I very rarely miss a Sunday. And now I miss, I think it's the third one, three in a row. But um, I did try to catch up Jake's a little bit. But I remember why I left now. Why? Uh, I ain't going to say anything about that. But anyway. And I watch our own church. Apparently, all the churches are on, online now. They're doing Facebook Live. I don't know why they don't just go directly to YouTube. But maybe some are. I watched four episodes. Like, oh, you watched it. Binge watched it. I have a feeling, uh, Leandris, that that's what I'll be doing as soon as I get off of here. I just don't want to lose the light. Fascinating. I used to wonder, because uh, in the street life, I met some pretty smart guys, right? Street smart. And guys, were maybe they were able to uh, thrive in that world. And I wonder, 
when I stopped, when I got out of that world, why we couldn't transfer these these uh, talents to regular the regular world. You know, if you're able to build a drug business, you should be able to build another kind of business. So it kind of makes me wonder. A lot of wasted talent. So when I, after I got out of their life, I, I I couldn't I couldn't find no footing. I couldn't find what else to do, but it's it's just based it's business. YouTube is business. You make decisions that are going to advance whatever your channel is, whatever. It's small time business, but still it's still business. Hey, Terralon. I watched it yesterday. It wasn't based on facts. It wasn't based on facts. Well, what do you mean, QDP? It wasn't based on facts. It's got it. They take they gotta take it from something. What was it based on a novel or something or a book? They're going to make things entertaining. And I mean, when you write a book, your book is maybe 350 pages. You got to condense that down to, I think a script is only like a hundred and 104 pages, something like that. That's for a whole movie, 104 pages. So you got to chop it all the way down to make it interesting in just uh, a couple of hours, right? A book can last you a whole week. So it says based on based on her story. I'm sure they must have had. I mean, basically, based, there's some things that are just facts. But I admire this little go between between her and her nemesis. There's always got to be a bad guy, right? The competition. So this other light skinned woman who believes that the greatest thing about her life is that she's light skinned. Her competition. Feels that a dark skinned woman can't sell hair, hair care products because uh, Madam CJ Walker, at first, she was trying to get convinced the woman because the woman had a good product too, right? Hair was growing. Uh, Madam CJ Walker was uh, around her using her products, letting her kind of experiment on her. But uh, when she asked the lady, Can I sell the product? Maybe I can represent you and get some more people involved. She said, No. Nobody will buy a product from you. Ooh. The implication is one is light skin and one is dark skin, right? And so, so the light skin girl feel like everybody in the world wants to look like me. <laughs> so CJ, first she stole the girl's products or took them. She didn't steal them. She, she took them and went out to sell them. This is what she was asking the woman to do, right? And the woman didn't want her to her name associated with this dark skin woman, right? But the product was work, was working beautifully. So Madam C.J. Walker took some of the product out of the house. She was her washerwoman. She was a washerwoman and her client, her client. Anyway, she took a whole bunch of canisters and sold them all and brought all the money back to her. And the woman went off on her. At that point, C.J. Walker decided to make her own company. I mean, she had been around this woman, so she started uh, putting ingredients together. I didn't say she got a recipe for her, how to, to do it, but she figured it out what was in it, right? Trial and error. And then they're showing us just how, how the basic, basically how business grows. But that woman followed her to Indianapolis. It was a boom, uh, boom in, in that, that period. And there are a lot of black people in Indianapolis now. So I guess this is the time that they came. Mostly from the South. They kind of made it interesting with storylines. Let me see. On colorism almost made Madam C.J. Walker seem so insensitive because of, of a high yellow woman. Okay, so uh, Alikia, Alikia, please forgive me, baby. I can't pronounce your name. Alikia, or something like that, 25, says, and to me, it focused too much on colorism. Uh, almost made CJ, Madam CJ Walker seems so in, insecure because of a high yellow woman. Well, maybe it's just, that's the reality. For some people, colorism is extremely important. Now, I'll be honest. Uh, I used to call my sister, who was actually lighter skinned than me, but I was a child, you know, teasing her about color. But years and years later, when we were grown people, she came back and told me how much that hurt her. I was making fun of her being a darker hue than, than me. So apparently I was, maybe I was a tiny bit lighter, but we're about the same color and she's lighter than me now. So 
But anyway, so that was a big thing to a lot of people. And you guys, be honest, light skinned people, they, they, it's almost like white people don't they don't understand uh, racism. Light skinned people, I, I don't see what the big deal many times, but it is a big deal to a lot of people. Because something you can't change. Or people, I guess they, they have ways of trying to alter it a little bit now, but especially, especially Southern people, colorism is, is a big, huge deal. So I, I can see how that would be the truth. And plus people back then, in the, what are, they, are they in the 30s? Who knows they're in the 30s or 40s? There were black folks actually trying to pass in the, the, in that time. They were trying, the lighter skin you were, the better off you were, right? Light-skinned people worked in the house. Dark-skinned people worked in the field. And then they had um, in entertainment. Lena Horn. I mean, she did so well because she was light-skinned. And a lot of they were light enough. They would try to pass. So uh, it is a big deal to a lot of people, baby. Uh, Eddie Moore was actually Annie. Malone, tons of colorism. Andy, Ma Andy Malone is from my hometown of St. Louis. That's where it started at. Andy Malone was not light-skinned. Andy Malone was not light-skinned. Okay. But when you're talking about hair, how can you avoid colorism? I mean, people, light-skinned, good hair. They, they associated the two together, Right. And like that woman said, everybody wants to look like me, which is not the true, of course. I think darker skinned women are, are more beautiful many times. Usually when you see a, a, a black model these days, a black model who's extremely successful, more often than not, she will be dark skinned and have dark African features. That's what they want. If you're going to represent, they want you to represent. Anyway, I don't know much about hair and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just looking at this from the business aspect. But co colorism is real. It is now. Go over there and watch Justin J channel. <laughs> if you don't think colorism is still real, a real thing, go watch Justin J. That's a big part of what he talks about. Anyway. Hold on. Call the topic of black tea and Nicks. Mm hmm. Let's see. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, people. Hey, Nikki. Thank you. Uh, I do feel like found a lot of family passing. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Andy Carter. Yeah, I didn't know much about our family history. At one point, one relative did a family history, one of those online things, and posted it online. And I know the name of our our the slave woman. Who we all came from, right? Her name was Old Hannah. That's why they call her. They just called her Old Hannah. But I don't. I, I never knew our history. I know we started off in in uh, Nashville, but in my time and my mother's time, we were in Indianapolis, and they've been there ever since. Of course, everybody came out of the South. Basically, everybody black came out of the South. Light skin, long hair. Got my cousin a teller job. First black teller at that bank in the seventies. Yeah, it changes. It changes sometimes too. Sometimes it's, it's it's I don't know. I guess lighter skin has always been very popular. But uh, then the sixties, it was you know, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. It's more to be Afri Africana. And now a lot of people. I mean, of course, a lot of women wear wigs and all that. But uh, a dark skinned woman with natural hair is considered a be very beautiful thing. I don't know. I know back in the in the fifties, times of Lena Horn and so forth, it, it was the thing you had to be light skinned. You couldn't get on 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 anything, or be in black. And then they take your black your light skin and put you in blackface for a good laugh, a joke. Mm -hmm. They go from one extreme to the next. Yep. Real light or low light yellow. Nothing changed, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but because you're light skin, don't make you necessarily prettier or anything like that. You can just be you can be light skin and be ugly. Your features can be ugly. You know what I mean? So it's not just assumed it's all about the the skin color. But I've had friends from this my best friend who passed away now. He was from uh what was he? Uh Alabama. He's a very dark skinned guy, and he would tell me horrible stories about dark skin. When he describes his family members, he would say, My sister, dark skin. <laughs> Or oh, this one, light skinned. He always talked about, he would always say Roosevelt's name. He would always say what color they were. So uh, colorism was a real big thing. And here's a thing, big thing to some people now. <sighs> anyway, what else is going on, people? So what do you guys think about I don't know. All these women, they all seem to have uh, long hair, though. I mean, thick, thick hair. She showed where she had lost her hair, I guess, because she was with some bad man and he was beating her up and all this kind of stuff. Stressed, stressed out, lost all her skin. And she, uh, her skin, I mean, lost all her hair. This woman's product really worked well on her. She came up with a product that worked well, but wasn't quite, wasn't quite as, as, uh, didn't smell as bad. I remember my mom used to wear, wear, wear this stuff. My mother was extremely light skinned. I had two sisters and one mother, right? My mother was light skinned. And my two sisters, one was dark skinned like her father, one was light skinned like her mother, kind of thing. But my mother always struggled with hair stuff. I remember she was always using those products. I wonder if it was these women's products, hair growing stuff and all that kind of stuff. Then everybody start wearing wigs. I guess it don't make a difference anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to be jealous of guys in high school. Jealous of guys, they, they were wearing big old afros, right? And my hair grew just like this. It grew this much and maybe a half an inch more and that's it. Then it just started curling up. Fortunately, fortunately for me, Afros are no longer the style, so don't make it make a difference. Whether you have long hair or short hair, you still cut it down to this, so it doesn't really make a difference. Mm. Grateful and blessed. Mm -hmm. I used to do it. And, ooh! <laughs> and the men used to do it with them activators. Y'all remember the process? My stepfather had a process. Lord, he had more hair care products than my mother. The men with, with the rollers in their head, then they tie it around. <laughs> they have a perm, a DA, I think they call it. Or we, I used to call them just a, a process. So black folks always struggle with this hair thing. Now, I guess it's just, I, I hate to say that we're, we're, we're emulating other people, but all this straight hair, a lot of it is wigs. I consider it that that's what they're doing now. You know, that, that don't mean it's what they're always going to do. But, uh, I guess wigs just make it easy. You got, I remember my sister and them crying because my mama with that hot comb and you can just smell the burning hair. I said, how the hell your hair gonna grow if you're burning out? Anyway, my, it's, it's, as strange as it seems, then my dark skin, darker skin sister, who is actually lighter than me now, she is, uh, she ended up making her living as a hairdresser. She's had her own business for something like 25, 30 years. Conk, that was stinky stuff. Yeah, they used to wear the conk. <laughs> so anytime a black man try to wear you out about your hair and about your straight hair and about your wigs and all that, remind them. Remind them of the years when we was all conking our hair, processing our hair and all this stuff, putting rollers in our hair. Then remind them of the Jerry Carroll. <laughs> what was that all about? Filth and dirt all over your, your you know. <laughs> the gangster used to have them rollers and, and the pimps. I, I guess, yeah, I guess it was the big thing was to have long hair. I wonder if it had if the pimps had extensions. Strange, they would all have long hair, right? That was the look, though. But even working people, that was the look. Processed hair. If you had enough to process. Okay. Bar barrettes. <laughs> they was wearing barrettes. <laughs> Somebody's remembering barrettes. 
Woo! I did not admire my sisters had to sit up, sit up there and let that woman run that hot comb right next to their scalp. Mm. <laughs> In those braids. <laughs> Okay, Lala says a grown uh, inward in uh, with barrettes on the ends of their braids, the black ones. Ugh, that don't sound too good. Then they had the, the S curl. You remember, like Shirley Temple curl on men. So let, don't let them Negroes uh, give y'all a bad time. Show them some pictures. Pull up some pictures online. Show them all the time they try to change their hair. I'm the only dark skinned girl in my family and the youngest. My sisters are, wait a minute. Teal Star T, I'm the only dark skinned girl in my family and my youngest, and the youngest, my sisters are yellow and dumb. I'm the matriarch of our clan. Oh, bless your heart. You gotta get them girls together. Some men love light-skinned women, but you know there's just as many who love dark-skinned women. There's men who like big women and women who like skinny real women. I mean, it's just, just be yourself, right? That that was, you know. Uh, what's that actress's name? The one I know it's not Viola, is it? What's that lady's name? She played in a lot of movies. She played in The Help. Anybody know her name? I know you all know her name. I feel kind of silly. Uh, yeah. I drink my own. Ooh, oh, wait a minute, Gina. Take my own. Wait a minute. Uh uh. Gina, you got to get the hell out of here. What the hell kind of statement is that? I didn't take you out. I just removed that statement. That, that's nasty. To, to grow, are you saying to grow hair? Viola Davis. And that's one of the biggest black stars in America. And I couldn't remember her name. I'll show you how much television I watch. Terrible light. Nope. I hope the train noise don't bother you guys. Viola Davis. So that uh, how long a series is that going to be? I see four episodes have been done. Does, does that mean that's, it, that's all they're going to do? Is it like a mini series? They do do those. That Aaron Hernandez story, I think it was four episodes. I missed it. Oh, go see it. I think you'll like it. Sometimes I don't like uh, a lot of old movies, uh, old bio, bios, whatever. They're always going to show the white people uh, dogging out black people and us being beneath them, being above and all that stuff. And some, sometimes I got to be in the right mood to watch all that. And there was one scene where uh, she was trying to find an attorney. This guy has trained as an attorney, but he was working as a, uh, like, uh, what do you call those people who move luggage at the train station? And some white dude came on him calling them all kind of boys and all this kind of stuff. So they showed us that bit of racism. I, I was happy that they could, they could just wrap that up quickly without turning the whole story into that. We already know they were racist, right? But this was done very, very well. It drew you into the story. When I was young, our white people just weren't a part of our lives. I mean, you might occasionally see like an insurance man, insurance man, or maybe the mail, not even the mailman. Usually it's an insurance man to come around with driving to our neighborhood. I live in a hard ghetto, but it was certainly all black people. So we didn't have that much encounter with white people, except for television. We would see them. Uh, so they were, ne they were never a big part of, of our lives to experience that blatant type racism, at least not as a child anyway. I haven't experienced a whole lot of it, to be honest, you know, in, in my life, period. But then I wasn't, I spent a lot of time outside of the working world. That girl has some thick hair too. And I think that woman's uh, hair is thick like that. It's pretty amazing how some people's hair can grow Thick, just like that. Uh, but I was amazed at how much that hurt my that teasing, which I thought was just being silly, actually had an effect on my sister. She held that resentment for years. 
And I imagine a lot of people have something you can't change, you know. Octavia. No, okay, wait a minute. Okay, it's Octavia Spencer is the lady's name. What was the other name we just called her? We misspoke. We mis okay, Viola Davis. Okay, it's not Viola Davis. Now, Viola, who is she? Is that uh, How to Get Away with Murder? This lady's name is Octavia. She's the lady who gave that woman a, a poop pie in, in uh, the help. Okay. Honest mistake. Then her daughter is played by Tiffany Haddish. Well, her old tall self. Mm -hmm. and who's, the, who's the husband? The second husband, her good man. What's his name? He's a popular actor, too. Yep. I remember when I was a kid, my uh, I was walking my little sister, and she, we got hit, she got hit by a car. It was the car's fault. And then all the black people ran around, because the white woman who, who had struck, stumbled into our neighborhood, right? They was ready to beat the woman down because she hit my little sister. So I lied and I said it was my sister's fault just so that woman could get, she had a little two babies with her so she could get on. As I remember the way the, the, way the story went, but it was only me and her there. I was the only witness. I said, no, 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 no. My sister ran into the street. Now it might've might, might happened that way. I don't remember. I just remember I had to say something in order for this woman not to get jumped on. It was an accident. Blair Underwood. There he is. See, I know y'all know. Y'all all younger than me, I'm sure. Y'all know all the actors and actresses. Some of these uh, guys that they're saying are superstars in the rap world and all that. I had no idea who them people are. They be showing all these uh, $100,000 rings. I said, where do you get that from? I ain't never heard of them. But I should know who Blair Underwood is. Okay. Think. Oh, who is this? Marcia. Uh, Marcia Cleveland. Thanks for super chat, honey. You number one fan. You. <laughs> Thank you. So, how many have not seen it? She still ran her over. Did she receive response? The woman was in tears, honey. Faith in and 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 substance is the substance. No, I didn't. Want, I wasn't gonna say that woman sit up there and get beat up by these, all these people who didn't understand what happened. It was an accident. I, the, the, if the woman had run on the curb and tried to run my sister down, of course I would let him kill her. But it was just an accident. I don't remember who was at fault, but I felt like I had to say what I said. And no, I didn't feel like the woman had done anything wrong. Good girls is good too. I don't remember any difference between my sisters though. One was light skinned. She was an attractive girl. And the other one was extremely light skinned. My, my other sister looks like uh, almost like Milano when she was young. She had the, the sandy brown hair. It, it was it, it was it was natural hair. I mean, it was black hair, but it was real, real light color kind of thing. I don't ever remember them having a, a problem or one thing in one was better than the other or anything like that. Not, not between them, but I was a bad child. So I always teased them. I teased them with whatever I thought would make them mad. <laughs> I, don't, I wasn't a bad child. I didn't do anything violent to any of my family members, anything like that. But I was a tease. And I was a homebody. So like they say, I was always home. <laughs> I felt it was the brother's responsibility to make the sister's life miserable. <laughs> There we go. The sun's just going down in San Francisco. I did go and try to get some. So far, I just been eating Marie, Marie Callender's or soup, right? Since this thing started a week ago. But uh, when I took the dog out, I said, well, let's go and I'll go to the burrito store. I had gloves on. And I saw that they prepared the food with uh, with gloves on. But then I noticed that after he prepared the food, because there was nobody in there. I was the only person in the restaurant, right? Mexican food, very big 
they here in California. Anyway, he made the food with gloves on, but then he was the only person there, so he had to take the gloves off and use the register or give me the bag. So I said, no, it's still transference here. So since the burrito is wrapped in, in foil, I, I brought it home and then I threw the, the, all the packaging away and then I cooked it, heated it up in the oven. So if there was anything on it, it'd be dead. I'm getting a little paranoid myself. But I was amazed that nobody was at that restaurant because it's a popular restaurant. But they only do takeout now. Hmm. Mm, I don't play in it in two both very good actors. Yeah. Viola Davis played played in it too. Viola Davis is in there with Octavia Spencer. Wait a minute. I don't know. I only saw one episode, remember? I'm gonna watch it tonight, all three of them. Viola Davis played in it too. Now, who is Viola Davis? Is that uh how to get away with murder? I'm just sitting on the West Coast. Uh, no, don't get paranoid. Well, I mean, I, I'm just following what they say. Every day is the new story, worse and worse and worse. So the streets are barren. I'm looking at the train. Ain't nobody on the damn train. These trains here to go in front of my window, they're one, like two of the main veins. Usually, well, on Sunday when we... I mean, it wouldn't be pack pack, but there's nobody on the train even. Nobody on the train, nobody on the stick. There are people out there walking their dogs and so forth. But as far as I know, that's safe. You don't have to have a mask on just to be out in the, in the open air. You just got to stay away from people. And I've been holding the dog back just in case. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure, sure that uh, they would have told us if this thing would transfer from animals to people. But if someone has something on their hands and they touch your dog, then isn't that then transferred to the dog's coat? I don't know. I ain't taking no chances. Drug them from our pickup truck. What happened? What happened? Let me see. No, not, not in self-made. Viola Davis was not in it. I haven't seen her yet. She wasn't in the first episode anyway. Uh -huh. Drug them from our pickup truck. What are you saying there? Uh, Makog the killer. Makog, Makong the killer. Oh my God. Are you talking about dragging people out of trucks and killing them? Drug from our pickup truck. I don't know what you, what, you, what you guys are talking about there. I mean, he is a chocolate bar. Here I go being dumb again. Okay. Now, grateful and blessed. I'm just realizing that if I don't understand what your emoji is by placing my cursor on your emoji, it tells me what that is. So that is a chocolate bar. <laughs> Hugging face. Oh, my God. Sometimes I'm so embarrassed about how slowly I learn all of this stuff. Okay. So, I mean, I know what Tracy's hammer is. But if I don't know what something is, I just put it, I put this cursor on there and it tells me what it is. All right. Yep, Uncle Tim. They had first dog died in Hong Kong. Oh, they had the first dog died in Hong Kong from, from this virus? Okay. So we just keep people's hands off the dogs. I, I think it's a thing. That's not really a problem anyway, because we're not close, you know. Yeah, shouldn't have people touch your dogs and stuff for it. I worry mostly about, like, a lot, there are a lot of uh, homeless people, people on drugs and stuff like that. The way you can tell, a, a speed, I, I know this from when I was in the life, uh, the, the way you can identify a speed freak very fast, is their hand, you look at their hands and their hands are real, real dirty. Something about that drug makes you want to touch everything. You're constantly touching things. So that makes me very nervous if we come by people because sometimes sidewalk right by people, someone like that touching the dog 
it would make me uncomfortable. But um, yeah, your your hands would be all blistered up and all that. You're, you're constantly, it's almost impossible to keep your hands clean if you're doing that particular drug. So far, I've been wearing, putting on gloves when I leave and then throwing them away when I get back. But how long is that going to last? I got to go over to this hardware store tomorrow and see if they still have any more boxes because you can go through a hundred of them pretty fast if you're using two or three pair a day. Right? Mm -hmm. Which drug has the dirtiest hands? Which drug has the dirtiest hands? I just speak out of my own experience. If you're a crystal meth addict, you have got filthy hands. You can't wash your hands enough because that thing, it makes you, you, you look at speed freaks, you, not only the ones you see in the trash and can and all that kind of stuff all the time, but even when they're in their, their hotel room and so forth, they are constantly touching things. If there's something about that. The, the hands get all blistered and cuts and all over the hand because they never stop. So somebody, well, back in the old days when I was boosting, I had to go in the store. I had to hide my hands because if they saw my hands, they would know I was a drug addict. Therefore, I was there to steal. No matter how hard you try, you wash them and wash them and wash them and come back 10 minutes later, they're dirty again. So I don't know about a lot of other drugs, but I guess it's only, I only talk about stuff like that because there's so much of it here in San Francisco. I mean, just a lot. So when I go out, only thing I'm touching really are doorknobs and the elevator button. But better safe than sorry, right? Look at each other, right? <laughs> they don't want you to come over there and say nothing, honey. Addict. That's right, baby. And the truth will make you free. I hate when people pick on people because, because when they try to share any part of themselves on here. That just makes me nuts. That's why you can't get smarter. Everybody got secrets, you know. Whatever. <laughs> Lee Andreas, what you know about that girl? <laughs> a meth addict will break a car motor down, right? And then they will leave it just like, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> I used to have so many dope fiends. Tear, they'll come in, you know, everybody watches pornography and all this stuff, right? It's all we do, really. They come in in them dirty ass hands and they will tell you that they went to, they have a, a degree in and electronics, and they would proceed to tear down your, all you needed usually was, you had VCRs, that's what we were using then. If you keep using them all the time, and your, your hands are dirty and stuff like that, you gotta clean the heads, right? I cannot tell you how many times people have came and take my VCRs apart and leave them just like that, taking televisions apart. That's their tweak. But they never tweak long enough to put it back together again. And you are right. Yes, they will take a motor apart, TV apart, computers apart. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of working on computers. Back then, we barely had, we didn't have all this high speed and stuff. Take them up. And then it's, it's just junk after that. Because when they put it back together, half the stuff is left outside. Yeah, that was insane. That was never my tweet, though. I was not interested in taking nothing apart. <laughs> oh, you talk about your dad, <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's okay to have information. When they come down, they don't know poop because they want another hit. They start giving you hints. Oh, I'm getting tired. I'm getting sleepy. So when they're going to do another hit and then they're going to take apart something else. <laughs> I'll start peeking out the window. Some other foolishness. Uh, oh, my goodness. James Boss. There are people going around pretending to be coronavirus testers to people's houses. And when you let them in, they rob you. Don't fall for it, people. Crime's going to go up. It's going to go up. 
They say in downtown San Francisco, there's two cops on every corner. Don't go up because you ain't got no money. They ain't got no hustle. Drug addicts have to get high. That's what it's all about. It, it, either they're high or they sleep. So, yeah, they can't. If, 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 if money is dried up, they're going to get more and more desperate. And if, if this thing lasts too long, regular people will get desperate. I think you got to feed your, your family, you know. A meth at Tiffany Hall, a meth addict sounds like a bipolar person during a manic episode. During a manic episode. No, they're worse. They're worse, honey. A meth addict, when they are, when they are high, you don't want to see that. There ain't nothing like bipolar. It's not a mood change. It's a whole different person. But I guess coming down, then they, they would be, well, they, they eventually pass out. That's how people are able to, to sleep on the street. You wonder, how can somebody sleep on the street outside? It's cold and all that. Well, they're basically passed out. They go as long as they can go, and then they can't go anymore, and they pass out. Unless somebody gives them more dope. But it, then uh, it's very hard because then when you wake up, you're so weak, you got to try to get the first hit to get going again. So people don't want to come down. They just fight going down. That's why you end up with all these crazy people out here. Well, people will go. Weinstein has. Weinstein has the virus. You heard Weinstein has the virus. He wants freedom. I ain't heard that story yet. No doubt he'll try everything. Wouldn't that be something if the lawyers went in there and gave him the virus so he can get out of jail? Remember, most people survive it. But he's old, so he looks old. I mean, Weinstein's only 60, what do you say, 67, something like that? I'm 61. That looked like my daddy, my daddy's age. He's a, he's a worn out 67. They stocked up on liquor, too. I wouldn't want to be in the house with, with uh, these men when they start drinking, though. Not for days and days and days and days. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys enjoying the quarantine? Okay, so Nicole reloaded. The mod says, Where was it at? Let me see. Harvey Weinstein has tested positive for the coronavirus, an official briefed on the matter told BuzzFeed News. Weinstein was previously held at Rikers Island Jail in New York City, which H.A. Okay, so he's been moved, Nicole. That's one way to get out. I imagine they probably just quarantine him, though. Yeah, you don't want something like that to get loose in the jail. More than likely, he's been in the cell by himself the whole time he's there, though. But you don't want that to get loose in the jail, so they definitely probably move him out of records into some kind of quarantine. Thank you, Tiffany Hall. Oh, my God. In Florida, the gun stores look like nightclubs. In Fort Myers, it's a line to get in and ammunition is hard to find. Lord, what you gonna do? Are people just want to protect their homes? Then that's what paranoia would do for you, honey. You'd be to mess around and shot some kid. You gotta protect your bottle of water. I don't think protecting your bottle of water is worth killing anybody. Don't you gotta stand your ground laws and stuff there too? Why you gotta kill them? I don't understand the gun stuff at all. Walker wasn't working for him. He's trying to get an early release. Okay. He know they want him. Well, he, uh, he, I, that don't mean he don't get on the street though, because he, he's tested positive. He might get to a better facility or he might get to some kind of a rock room by himself. 
which is probably what he's already in. But uh, Weinstein ain't going nowhere because he got the virus. They don't let you go for that. When they let you go for, uh, on compassion and leave, you got to go back to court. Hold on. They let sometimes let old people, when they feel like they're good, ready to die, they got cancer or something. They can get out, but by the time they get out, I mean, it's not much point in it. Because they ain't going to let you out unless you're, you're on your deathbed. What is in mess that makes addicts so obsessed with sex? <laughs> Charles Dotson. Don't ask me, honey. Uh, don't ask me. I don't even, I never, I was never a cook or anything, right? I just bought and sold a product, but I can attest to it is extremely sexual like that, right? You even give it to a prudish person. Whoever's in the room with them is going down. So that's the mystery. But it used to be, I think meth started in Germany and Hitler would give it to his soldiers, keep them going for days and days and days without sleep, right? And then when I first heard about it, uh, only people who were using it were uh, white bikers. That was my first contact with our hearing about it, white bikers. And then it, when the gay people got a hold to it, so I assume that if, if it's a side effect with gay people, it's the side effect with those people as well. Bikers were using it first. But drugs, you know, it, it catches on in different communities. And so people will say, oh, well, Wilson always says, oh, it's a white man drug. A white man's drug. A drug is a drug, honey. You don't give a damn who it attaches to. So when I was out there, it was everybody drug. But uh, it, it's epidemic in the gay community. And from the first time I tried it, I knew why. So stay away from that, Charles Dawson. Don't try it. Don't sniff. Don't do nothing. My big thing was I was alcoholic at first, right? And I say alcoholic in as much as I went to the bars every night, right? Uh, I tried meth because I didn't want to be so drunk, falling down drunk all the time. Because after two or three drinks, I'd get drunk. And so uh, just to stay awake a little more, I tried that. It ended up costing me 17 years. The National Guard is heading to San Francisco. What are they going to do? I don't know what the National Guard is going to do. There's, my friend told, told me that he saw people are boarding up their windows, though, in these stores. That tells me that they're concerned about rioting. You don't want these people to get too desperate, honey. They're boarding up their stores since they're walking away from them. You're right, Hilo. I know they want to protect their house. Hopefully, people will not be kicking people's doors and steal their canned goods. People don't have a lot of money in the house. I mean, you know, we're all in the same position, can't function, can't do anything. Where we go? Okay, so no, I didn't see that. Uh X Exude line, Exude line, Exude line. Uncle Tim, did you watch the video of the Lake Worth Beach commissioner in Florida going off at at the mayor? I, I don't know. I didn't see it. I haven't watched a bunch of news because it seems like this, this is the same thing. I saw Trump and them up there on the stage today, but I mean, it's saying the same thing over and over and over again. They want to give the people who make the most money the most money. The people who need it most will get little or nothing. Hey, Almond Brown 09. Hmm. You see, they are preparing for martial law. Martial law is everybody got to stay in, right? Okay, I hope they don't start this Dem Democrats and and Republicans and they're fighting about the details of, of these uh, stimulus package thing. They need to get something done to get it done quick. You know, I can just imagine what, what it's like for a person who has goes to zero income. 
So I guess the big part of it is going to be they're going to extend your unemployment. Something's got to be done for the seniors because they don't work, but they they still need money. They got to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to check that thing out about the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Saw the video that from Florida, the commissioner stood up to the mayor. Okay. Stanford Act, that's what the National Guards are being a symbol. What's the Stanford Act? I mean, we're inside. It seems like everybody, as I look around here, I, it seems like most people are inside. Unless they want to just start sending people in jail if they're not, if they're, they don't abide by the curfew. It doesn't seem to be much of a problem because I can't see a lot of people around. But I'm not out in the neighborhoods, you know. The neighborhoods where people hang out. I guess that would be the issue. occupied territory so is it part of this I mean they're going to take over businesses like a martial law kind of thing where they take over the business and have them all making masks i think some of the companies are doing this voluntarily but i guess the government can they can force it on you as well it's so like when they want to build a freeway they if you own property and you won't move they offer you money at first if you won't do it then they just take it over Okay. Uh -huh. They're upping Social Security for a couple years. Okay. They're upping Social Security for a couple years. I just switched to Social Security, regular Social Security. I got a couple dollars more, but... Uh, Hopefully they'll stimulate, give us some stimulus as well. I don't know. It sounds like 600 bucks is going to be for people who don't have anything. People working in the medical field have to have documentation in California to be out during work curfew hours. Okay. Who is that? The voice. People working in the medical field have to have documentation in California to be out during curfew hours. Let's hope Trump not gonna turn this into the big documentation thing. We're all in this together. Everybody's trying to live. I hope he doesn't start treating people from other countries or immigrants different than he treats the other people. This is not the time for that, Trump. It's not the time for that. Be the first ones to use these people for whatever you can get out of them. And then you're willing to let them be treated differently or perish. They always say they're not going to give anybody not documented any money at all. So, like, their hunger needs are not the same as everyone else. So, I don't know. But I hope it doesn't turn to that. Y'all know that's what he ran on, right? Separating people, tribalism, racism. All that stuff was food for his, his, his followers. Mandatory shut down tomorrow in Florida. In Italy, France, and soon my country, the situation is so, so bad. Nobody is walking out. That's right. So what else can we do? The only power we have is just to stay in here. My uh, my nephew wanted to come in and copy some papers on my computer uh, tomorrow. And I, I, after thinking about it, I said, no, maybe we ought to think, rethink that. Because uh, so far, nobody's been in here but me. Right? So I feel relatively safe in here. But maybe we shouldn't be uh, even with cl people, close people to our family. Because so far, when the family, anybody in the family gets this, 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 this virus, the whole family gets it. So I tell them, no, we had to put that off. I don't think I'm going to make any exceptions to anybody coming in here. Because then I would have to be constantly sterilizing everything because you're bringing things from the outside into the inside. Seventy-five k or less. People making that kind of money. Lord have mercy. Uh, I'm sure there are exceptions and other guidelines. Charles Dotson. Yes, Tim. I thought the stimulus proposal was for twelve hundred dollars if you make seventy-five thousand or less. 
I would certainly qualify for that. I'm sure there are exceptions and other guidelines. You know, they haven't come up with all these rules and regulations and things yet. A trillion dollars. A trillion dollars. I, I, I hate to, sometimes I ask, hate to ask questions because I don't want to sound stupid, right? But a billion dollars is a thousand million dollars, correct? So a trillion dollars is a thousand billion dollars. Good God Almighty. That's a lot of money. And for a stimulus just to get somebody a one-time check, I think most of the money is going to business. I think most of it is going to business. I don't think they would expend that kind of money. And then we all get a, a couple of weeks because a thousand bucks. I mean, how long does that last? A couple of weeks. Uh, to be honest, I, I just can't follow for, for so long. I mean, these programs, I only watch uh, cable news. It's the same thing. I mean, we've been going now for what, three weeks with the same damn story? It gets frustrating. You can't, you know. I guess if they have something, man, I can't stand and get anything from Trump or his whole team. You let them talk, and when they're finished, get it from the commentators, the ones you trust. With him and with his whole, ugh. Anyway, it's a damn shame you can't trust anything come out the president's mouth. You see what could happen? This is what could have happened. What's the harm in putting a liar in the office? Here you go. It's July 15th for tax. Uh, they should make up <clears throat> la la. They shouldn't make us pay taxes or make us pay our health care for a while because we ain't going, we ain't going right now, anyways. Right. I think you can delay, you can delay they, you can delay your mortgage and you can delay your car payments in most states. Uh, taxes, well, that's been put off. You ain't got to pay them until July. So are they really going to be giving those checks? I'm not depending on it until it's... Yeah, I'm not depending on it. It'd be nice to get a check for $1,000. But uh, uh, it ain't like I'm going nowhere. I mean, a thousand bucks is not that much money, really. Not if you continue to pay all your bills. Now, I know a lot of you guys have got it a lot easier than we have it in California, New York. But still, a thousand bucks is a thousand bucks, right? Some places, maybe your mortgage is only five, six hundred dollars. You can you can make better use of that money, but in some places, that ain't nothing. Most of these guys here to paying their rent is, is two or three thousand. Anyway, it ain't like you're spending a lot of money either. You're in the house. He's fighting with the journalist. Oh, he's an idiot. That dude is a fucking idiot. Oh, oh, you're a terrible, you're a terrible reporter. Ah, I mean, you call yourself a wartime president. And you're sitting here still having these same silly, petty arguments with journalists. And the guy's question wasn't even no hard question. Peter Shrook or whatever his name was. His question wasn't even hard. They just want some little, little bit of reinsurance and to tell the truth without any spin. Trump is not capable. He has a real hard on for, for these reporters. But he has to remember that they helped put him in office. Y'all remember when he was running? Every damn show was about Donald Trump. It was all free publicity. So what, maybe they didn't want to help him, but they helped him. We can't trust him for sure. So certainly we, we have to be able to, to trust the journalists. You can, you, I, was, I would much rather get it from the journalists, New York Times, than to get it from Donald Trump. It's fake news. You're the one that tells the fake news. You've been proven to be a liar. I mean, thousands and thousands of times. Every time you open your mouth. They should. What they should do is just have you just step aside, period. Don't say anything because you can't help yourself. I'm sure they gave him prepared remarks. Soon he get a chance, he attacks the journalists.
Oh, yeah, you have to do your... I have it right here. I put it off. They're sending out your census forms, and you can do it online. I've neglected to do that. Should do it. I don't got no excuse. Apparently, if you don't do it, they're going to come looking for you. Let me see. Nicole Reloaded. Furthermore, Senate Republicans' proposal only provides half benefits for, for individuals who need these checks the most, like seniors on a fixed income and those who pay very little tax. Right. Exactly. They're the ones that need the most. And if things get out of hand and people go crazy, that's who's going to go nuts first because they're going to be broke first. These people making seventy five thousand dollars, they probably got a little something put aside, you know. Yeah, they should certainly shouldn't penalize these uh, seniors as far as stimulus. Uh, I uh, I'll spend a thousand dollars at Walmart. <laughs> Ooh, you high low, you living good. High low, Lena, I'll spend a thousand dollars at Walmart, Ross, and eating out in one weekend. People do it all the time. I mean, a lot of people that, that's their paycheck a week, not a month. Not certainly not three months. I think the the, the high living is dead for a while, though. High low. We got to worry about just keeping the basics. Supplies, like we're at war or something. Yeah, I get direct deposit for everything I do. Thousand bucks is easy to blow. It's easy to, bl to blow, but stay in your house and we won't have so much expenses. Because every time I remember, I used to not like to go outside because I said every time I go out of the house, it's $20. So let's step out the door. Everything costs, right? But when you're in the house, you know, I guess you could go crazy online, though. Let's all just hope this thing is going to be over soon and we'll get back to our regular lives, right? Thank God I'm a homebody. That's what I say, Almond Brown. <laughs> Some people are going to go crazy. Yes. I know people who are always outside They They get up in the morning and they are out in the world until they go to bed at night. For me, I'm like you, Almond Brown. I am a homebody. It is no thing at all for me to stay home. All right, people. Stay in. Locked up, they won't let me out. Stay in, take care of yourselves. Thanks for showing up. Thank you, moderators. I appreciate you guys. Okay, we'll talk in the week.